You spend nights up late grinding, practicing matchups, working on your best decks, getting yourself ready throughout the year, and then it comes down to the Sweet 16, the final who are trying to make it into that top 10 and make their way to Clash Royale League World Finals. And in just one weekend, your entire fate that year is decided, whether it's all been worth it and you're going to Helsinki, or whether it stops right here on a dime. Hello, and welcome to Three Crowns. I'm Rich Slate, and joining me as always, my friend, Andrew Guy, and we're rounded out by two-time regional Clash Royale League champion, Joshua A.C. Sharon. This is your home for Clash Royale Esports news and beyond. And Andrew, we are getting deep into the beyond as we get down to just a few more players trying to vie for that shot at Worlds. I'm so excited, man. Clash Fest is here. Will you be there? Have you got your ticket yet? Make sure you do. The three-day event is coming your way in just a little bit. But first, we got a few more steps along the way, which is perfect because there's going to be enough time for me to get my voice back. Stage four is in the books. An incredible day of action. More on that in just a little bit. AC is back, breaking down a match just for you guys. And as I said, stages five and six are coming your way. Favorite matches, maybe, we'll talk about in just a little bit. And of course, more details on Clash Fest. But first, Rich, huh, I need some water. Talk to me about stage four, brother. Andrew, I know your voice is lost, probably because you were watching this weekend's Top 32. It was scream after scream with crazy finishes the whole way through. A lot of that horse throat coming from Surgical Goblins. Continuous nail-biter victories throughout this Top 32 competition. Here he is in a make-or-break match against Keefe. Winner goes on to the Top 16. Loser's journey is over. And check out Keefe's Magic Archer in the final 30 or so seconds of regulation time. Getting an absolutely massive lead here against the GOAT. It looked like it was all sewn up. 30 HP left, but check out the magic here from Surgical Goblin. It's the low elixir for Keefe. He cannot stop that golem from getting on tower, so now it's about a foot race. And check it out, the pop! That's only 5 HP at level 11 for that goblin drill. Surgical Goblin moving on to your top 16. Here we go for the nemesis, the longtime rival of the man we just mentioned. It's Morton up against Yuya. Morton in the lead in the final moments against Yuya, trying to get that damage on the right-hand side and also stop that royal giant. The high mortar does stop it for a second, and a great placement by Morton, knowing he has to keep that lightning off tower the best he can and keep that royal giant away. Trying to slow it down with a snowball and doing just enough here to get that mortar down in time. Lightning not going to make enough room. The royal giant does not get the shot on tower. Morton going through three and one, and maybe, just maybe, We'll see if those two meet up later in this competition. On to the young star, Adriel, up against Hugo of France. And this was a wild finish. Ten seconds left. They are absolutely tight. And right now, it's the Magic Archer trying to get on that right-hand side tower. The Wall Breakers end up distracting. But check out the Cannon Cart sneaking on by on the left-hand side for Adriel. So Adriel trying to push on the right-hand side. Hugo defends that brilliantly, gets ahead on the left. But the Cannon Cart, as it has done so much, many times before slides right on by and takes that victory. GG, well played. We'll see if Adriel can continue that run on through our top 16. Those were some of the best moments from this last weekend, but of course, we want to get in a little bit deeper. So let's go to Joshua AC Sharon for an in-depth look to our match of the week. Thanks, Rich. I am going to be attempting to break down why and how Vitor75 was able to go 3-0, and a perfect run in stage number four. Here's the thing. When you are going against pros that are very well known, you have your opponents set in front of you. Pandora, Air Surfer, Adriel. All of them play a different way. All of them are willing to snipe, anti-snipe, counter-snipe. Uh, you know, if they think one deck is going to... Uh, be able to have a lot of success against all your decks, then they are certainly going to use that in their arsenal. You have to be out thinking. You have to be out playing. You have to know that, you know, you're going to have to switch it up. You can't stick with what has got you there. You need to be continually improving, adapting, just trying to stay one step ahead. So if we take a look at Pandora's gameplay right here, it's, it's just obvious most players aren't willing to use Lava Loon. 
And that's the difference between Vitor and somebody who goes, you know, three and one or loses their first game in the stage. So right here, we see the Inferno Dragon able to snipe the Golem. Skeleton Dragon's able to clean up the Mighty Miner place just in front. And that's the thing. He's going to be using Lava Loon while most players are going to be using, you know, Hog EQ perhaps or, you know, Royal Hogs. And it's going to put them in precarious situations. And so that's why I really like Vitor's early run. The first set of the day, he's going to be using Lava Loon. Nobody else is willing to do that. I just love this opening start from him. And that's why he goes 1-0 to start this. The lightning comes down. Loon still gets the death damage. Fireball is going to come down shortly. We see the Mighty Miner to protect. I thought the Mighty Miner uh, wasn't going to protect the tower from getting the splash damage from the Skeleton King. But that's not the case. Gets game number one. Set number two. Air Surfer versus Vitor. Game number three. This is the difference. You use the quick cycle. You have the Dark Prince instead of the giant skeleton. And that's going to be what wins him this set. You have to be or continuing to make sure that you are using the best decks in the meta. So, you know, game number one, game number two, those are very important. But game number three is when you have to make sure that your decks are going to match up well. And it really is as simple as one player has Dark Prince, one player has Giant Skeleton. And so we see 35 seconds left. We see the attempt, the double cannon cart from Air Surfer. The opposing cannon cart on the tour side does more than enough. Takes out one of the cannon carts, takes out some of the, uh, of the remaining health of the drill, and it's able to clean up enough so that way he was able to get the win eventually. Set number three, this is when it all counts. You need to make sure that you are playing your best. You don't want to go 2-0, oh, then 2-1, two, 2-2, one, two, 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 This is game number one right here. The brilliant defense over and over again. He lost his first tower. He got his king tower down to 500 HP, and it didn't matter. He continued to defend, and right here, game number one, this is why he was able to go 3-0. He uses a quick cycle Royal Hogs version. He doesn't use the Royal Hogs version with Mirror. He doesn't use Hog EQ. He sticks with the Royal Hogs EQ. And I loved that from him. It's, it was so shocking to see this version of the deck. And I mean, Adriel just couldn't break through. It was, it was sick. He just never had that opportunity to, uh, to be able to take that third crown. This is game number two. Everything on the line. He, he, he just wants to get a clean set. He, he doesn't want to have to get it to game three. He's He's been getting to game number three, and that's just not what you want. The stress levels are too high, and Vitor is able to win with the RG Fireball. And again, it's the adaptation from Vitor. Earlier on in his second set against Air Server, he uses RG Lightning to try and catch the Inferno Tower, but... In this set, he uses the RG Fireball because he believes that this version is going to be better against Adriel. You just have to be switching things up, and that's what he was able to do. That's why he went 3-0, and that's why Vitor moved on to stage number five. That's going to be all from me. I'm going to give it back to you, Andrew. That's right, AC. Great match breakdown, by the way, brother. Five and six. Those are the final two stages for 10 golden tickets to be given away. First day, Saturday, easy money, right? Same thing we did last weekend, except, oh yeah, only half as many players are remaining. Then the next day, less than 24 hours, our last chance qualifier. The eight players from our 16 that did not make it through in stage five will be seated into a single elimination bracket. One last chance, one last opportunity opportunity to get those final two golden tickets. We're giving out eight on Saturday, two on Sunday. That gets us to 16 for World Finals. Rich, Josh, you guys talked a lot about great matches we've seen. A lot of great matches that we might see is a conversation that I want to have now. Rich, you mentioned it before, your top two players, Serge and Morton. That's what I want. I think that's what everyone wants. I want a 2019 rematch. I don't know if it's Saturday. I don't know if it's Sunday. I don't know if it's at World Finals, but that is the matchup that I must see before this season is over. What are you guys thinking? 
Well, I mean, first of all, who doesn't want to see that one? Let's let's just box that one up. That should be the answer for every person who's ever watched Clash Royale, right? You want to see Morton and Surge. Uh, but if you go a little bit deeper on the depth chart, I really want to see Air Surfer and KK in a matchup. You're talking about two guys who are fairly similar in terms of their position in their national Clash Royale scene, right? You have two guys who are both longtime veterans. Both have at one time been the best with their perspective decks in the world. They're both completely, they're both experienced, they're both talented. You look at kind of the track they've taken, very similar. I think that's one of the best matchups on paper outside of the big marquee matchup between two guys who've been around for a long time and both deserve to be at World Finals. Love it. KK and Air Surfer. AC, what do you got? Uh, look, I have to go with Coffer, a.k.a. Faust. Uh, I have to go with Faust and Doom. Uh, I, I, I love the synergy between those two players. Lava versus Loon, Loon versus Lava, Air Assault between the two players. How do they want to attack it? Do they want to go with their strengths? Do they want to go with the counter decks? They know all about what's going to, you know, what the best response is when, you know, Inferno Tower isn't a card available, when there's no fireball, when there's only lightning, when there's no arrows. And that kind of thought process, that mindset between the two players, I think there's a lot of potential for some incredible games. And I think both of them kind of want to set themselves up where they say they're the best in the game when it comes to air. And I think that could set up some uh, some crazy matches. Hey, you love to hear it, man. So we got two longtime vets and then two uh, up and comers, if you will. But Rich, what is this all for? Why, why are we talking about this? Well, because they will hopefully be making their way to Clash Fest, which is part of our Clash Royale League World Finals in Helsinki from September 23rd to 25th. It's a full Clash universe coming together. Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, all in one place. You can, of course, be a part of it. Go ahead and check out all those links for more information on it as well. Hopefully, we'll see you there in Helsinki, Finland. That's right. And those links, esports.clashroyale.com. Guys, if you haven't been checking out the site all year long, what have you been doing? Subscribe to this channel here. Turn on notifications. You just heard back-to-back -back action this weekend. And, of course, a three-day World Finals event where over a million dollars just in Clash Royale is going to be given away. Go follow Esports Royale EN on Twitter. You can give the three of us a follow as well. But got to go check your boxes, guys. You don't want to miss any action as there's only a few more days of CRL 2022. We can't wait. You can't wait. I'm already packing my bags, and we don't know who's going to be at World Finals yet. So we hope to see you there and, of course, see you this weekend to find out who those last World Finalists will be, both in our top 16 and our last chance qualifier for those last two spots on Sunday. Make sure you're there for that one. Subscribe to this channel. On behalf of everybody here, Andrew Guy, Joshua AC Sharon, and the entire Clash Royale Esports team, we'll see you next time on Three Crowns.